Okay, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to import data from an Excel file into R. And what we're going to be doing is using the XLSX package uh, to do so. So in another video I demonstrated how you could do this by converting um, a, an Excel file into a CSV file and then importing um, from uh, into R using the, uh, the standard base function for um, importing CSV data. Uh, in this case, I'm actually going to demonstrate a package that's available for uh, directly importing the data from uh, an Excel file into R. So uh, this is the data right here. Uh, this is the um, Excel file that we're working from. It's uh, The file name is actually LR and DA examples sub 1. And um, so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and go into R and I just went ahead and cleared the screen to, to provide the demonstration. So uh, the first step, um, if you haven't um, installed uh, the package uh, at this point or haven't done so thus far, uh, you're going to want to type this in. It's, it says install period packages uh, and then in parenthesis uh, you'll, uh, you'll have XLSX enclosed in quotes. So we're going to start by doing that. So we're going to type in install packages and then inside the quotes, we'll type in XLSX in quote and um, in parenthesis. And so when we hit enter, you'll see it says um, installing the package. And, and actually what's happened is I've already installed the package. So um, it's not actually going to do anything. But what will happen if you haven't already installed it is that uh, you'll get a little mirror site um, question um, uh, box that comes up. We have to choose where you want to download the package. So um, I actually have this in, a, in um, a PowerPoint file, and this is what it would look like. I'll even blow it up for you so you can see. So you can see right here that uh, after typing in uh, install package uh, XLSX, uh, this box will pop up, and then you have to basically select where you want to download from. So I actually selected USA and selecting from Kansas. So um, Okay, so the next step uh, is uh, we need to set the working directory. So uh, R uh, automatically is pointing to a directory um, when you're when you open it up and you're and you're going to use it. So uh, what you need to do is to set the working directory um, so that uh, essentially R is pointing to uh, the file or, or at least essentially the folder um, or working directory that. Um, contains your data. So uh, what we're going to do first is we're going to actually uh, determine whether or not uh, it's pointing to the right uh, directory. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in get wd and then uh, parentheses. And when I hit that, you can see that it's actually already pointing to the directory that contains um, the um, uh, data file in, in Excel format. So uh, this is it right here. So I don't really need to do anything to change that. Um, but, you know, if I did, let's say it was pointing to some other directory, like, for instance, I can, I can do this. Um, I'll just do a, a quick change. Um, let's just say I want to set it to uh, desktop, and let's say it was in, under this folder right here. Um, you know, if I typed in get wd in the parentheses, it would be pointing now to um, a different directory. Uh, so this is it whereas previously it was pointed here. And this is actually where the data set was, but I was kind of demonstrating how you can switch directories. So I can switch the directory back um, by going through change directory and then go to the actual um, uh, folder uh, right here and click on OK. And so now when I hit get WD parentheses, it's, it's returned back. Or if I wanted to uh, just utilize um, uh, the full command structure, I could just type in set wd uh, and inside the parenthesis, then I would actually have to be putting um, the um, uh, inc incorporate the, the directory. So I would be typing in, for this case, it would be c colon and then a forward slash. So it's not a backslash, but it's a forward slash. Uh, and then I'll just uh, type in the path, put my name there, uh, desktop slash R E X and uh, in parenthesis here and then uh, in, uh, or 
end quote and then in parenthesis. And so again, you know, basically when we look at it using the uh, get wd uh, function, there it is again. So at this point, um, what we want to do now is, uh, you know, we've already installed the package, so now we want to call the package up. So I'm going to type in library xlsx and um, then um, enter here. And so now um, it's, it's active, it's ready to import data. So what I'll do now is I'm going to create a data object. Uh, it's essentially going to be a data frame that contains the data from, uh, that's in included in the Excel file. One thing to note, uh, too, is that within the Excel file, you'll see down here, uh, it says uh, Sheet 1. Um, so, you know, the thing is, you're going to need to also keep in mind the sheet that you're working with. So if you have an Excel file with, uh, you know, multiple sheets, then uh, you're going you're gonna to be using the name associated with the sheet that you're downloading the data from. And, um, you know, you can also change the sheet name, too, if you needed to. You can just uh, right-click. You can see right here it says rename, and so I could rename this. So I could, you know, I could call it sheet, um, you know, two A or whatever. I'm gonna just leave it as sheet one, but that's just um, something to kind of pay attention to because you're gonna to need to to know the, the sheet number. So at this point, what we'll do is we'll type in. Uh, I'm just gonna create the data object that's gonna be called my data, and uh, it's an arbitrary name, but it's you know, it's it's um, it's reasonably descriptive. And next, what I'll do is I'll type in a less than sign and then a dash, which basically is creating an arrow. And then I'll type in read, period, XLSX. And then inside the quotation marks, I'll type in the file name, including the extension. So I'll type in um, LR and DA examples and sub one. So there were spaces between all these, so I have to have that represented. Then period, X, L, S, X, and then end quote here. I'll type in a comma, and then sheet, and then uh, capital N name equals, and then uh, inside the quotes, we just left it as sheet one. That was uh, the way it was named, So and there was no space between the, the word sheet and one and then in quote, and then in parenthesis. So now uh, the data has been uh, read in. So if I want to take a look at uh, the data itself, I can just type in my data and enter. And so now you can see that we have the, uh, the data represented. So here it is. So um, you have um, ID, donate, and so forth. And um, also, if I want to take a look at the uh, characteristics of the data, uh, what I could do is I could just type in str, and then inside a parenthesis, I'll type in the data object name, which is my data. And so now you can see, looking at it, that uh, it, during the import, you can see that uh, you know these variables were um, were uh, essentially treated as numeric. These variables were treated as factors, uh, numeric, and then a factor here. So. Uh, it was a little bit arbitrary, but basically that's the structure. So if I want to carry out subsequent analyses on uh, the data, you know, different types of analyses require, you know, certain um, uh, variable characteristics. And uh, so if the characteristics of the variables that's included in the data frame don't match with um, the uh, requirements of the procedure, then, um, then you'll end up getting error messages and so forth. So... What I thought I would do is I'm, I'm going to run um, just a uh, logistic regression. And uh, I did this in another video, but I'm, I'm going to change the logistic regression a bit. I've got a variable called donate right here, uh, which is intention to donate to a political cause. Uh, value of zero is uh, a lack of intention. A value of one is an intention. And I'm going to use uh, EPE, external political advocacy, and CFC. It happens to be a uh, consideration of future consequences. But you'll notice that um, here it's represented as a factor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use uh, an, the uh, as numeric function in order to convert uh, this variable uh, or coerce it from being a uh, factor into a numeric variable. So what I'll do now is I'm going to uh, be using uh, essentially uh, this uh, syntax right here. So uh, looking at it what, it, what you'll see is you'll see the original data object name, my data, 
then a uh, dollar sign, and then CFC. That's the name of the variable that I'm um, essentially uh, converting the 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 um, uh, characteristics uh, from essentially uh, factor to numeric. All right. So basically, this is just saying uh, that we're going to be work. You know, we're essentially converting the CFC variable into a numeric variable. So we next have um, our arrow represented, and then the function as period numeric. And then inside the parenthesis, we have my data uh, dollar sign CFC. So you'll notice that this looks exactly the same as this. And so what we're doing is uh, we're essentially making the conversion here and then saving this, um, you know, this variable in the my data set as numeric. So um, at this point, what we'll do is I'm just going to type it into the R program uh, so you can see it in action. So I'm going to type in my data dollar sign and CFC. And then my little arrow here, and then as period numeric, uh, and then inside the parenthesis, I'm going to also type again my data dollar sign CFC, and there you go. So now when I type in str and then my data to take a look at it, you'll see now that um, CFC is now being treated as numeric. So at this point, what I'll do is I'm just going to uh, briefly run a logistic regression and um, using the GLM function. So I'm going to create a data object that um, is uh, entitled my, data, my logit. Um, and so I have an arrow pointing to this. So basically it's just going to house uh, results from the logistic regression. So at this point what I'll do is I will type in GLM and then inside the parenthesis I'm going to type in the name of the dependent variable which in this case is going to be donate a little tilde right here, and then I'm going to type in EPE, oops, and then plus uh, CFC. So in the data set, all you know, uh, the variables are all in, in caps. So uh, make sure that you have your um, uh, you know your caps set uh, correctly when you're typing in um, your variable names and so forth. So next, I'm going to type a comma, and then data equals my data comma, and then we also need to uh, indicate the, the family um, associated with the generalized linear model. So I'm going to type in family equals, and then inside quotation marks, binomial, in quotation mark, and then in parenthesis. So now when I hit enter, um, there you go. So now uh, it's, it's essentially created a data object, my logit, that contains, a, contains results from the analysis, and I'll type in, um, I'll just you know, type in summary, or actually I'll just type in my logit, that'll work, and then enter, and so there you go. So now you can see that we have um, the basic model that's uh, listed right here, the coefficients and other details. So actually I demonstrate this in another video, but uh, the point was I was uh, kind of uh, seeking to show you that you know, after you uh, import your data, you need to look at the characteristics of the, of the uh, variables that um, in your data set and make sure that they are in accord with the requirements of the uh, uh, statistical functions that you're going to be running in R. One other thing to note too is um, that you know if you go up to edit you can also take a look at your uh, data as well by going through data editor and right here I'll type in the name of the data frame which is my data and uh, hit uh, OK or hit enter basically and there it is so this is the uh, actual data um, that we have in our data frame. Uh, if you want to look at the, the characteristics, we can go up here to donate, and you can see the type is set as numeric. Um, I could theoretically set as character, um, and that's the same for all of these right here. So there's uh, dog numeric, I could set as character, uh, EPE, and CF CFC. This originally um, would, you know, was uh, treated as a factor, and essentially, um, R will read uh, character data as factor if you're including it in your analysis. So uh, it, it essentially kind of started off this way, and then we, we essentially converted it to a numeric variable uh, with, with our as numeric um, function. So um, that pretty well concludes this demonstration of how to import da uh, Excel data into R using the XLSX package.